Afternoon friends, we have a nice easy one in this afternoon. I've got a new client coming today, supposed to be bringing two guitars, he's only turned up with one uh, for a legitimate reason, which is absolutely fine. Uh, but the one he's bought is just a basic setup on an acoustic, and it is a lovely thing. It's a Sigma Guitars made in China JM SG45, so basically a J45 copper. A Gibson J45 copy, it looks wonderful. Uh, it also sounds wonderful, it's a great sounding guitar. <laughs> Sounds really, really nice. Beautiful looking thing, uh, but looking at it, first impressions well, the neck is dead straight, so we certainly need to get some relief in there. The action here is really very high. We are looking probably. 6 mil, 7 mil at this end, at the bridge, I don't know, I've not measured it. So he does want me to lower the action, which is fine. Um, we'll lower the action by removing some material from the bottom of the saddle. Not too much, we don't want to go mental, uh, because if we remove material there, we're changing the brake angle of the strings at this end as well, which will alter the way the guitar tunes. So I'm just going to check the action at the uh, 12 fret. Looks to be quite a bit over 3 millimetres. And we are, it's not a bit of a 3 millimetres, it's 2.75 millimetres. I'd like to think we can get that down to about 2, 2.25 millimetres. So we're going to take at least half a mil off there. It means taking a mil off the bridge end or off the saddle. That's not a problem. Also, when we put relief in the neck, it's going to alter the action. With 2.25 on the treble, 2.75 on the bass, which is pretty standard for an acoustic. It's pretty normal. We are going to bring it a little bit lower. I do notice that the neck is sinking slightly in at this end, uh, creating a little bit of fall away. That is not a problem, uh, but it is important to store your guitars correctly. Make sure they are in a humidified room, or we've got the right humidity in a room. We don't want it drying out, and we certainly don't want to get it, get, want it getting too wet. But yeah, a beautiful thing, very nice looking guitar. Um, not bad for a China made guitar at all. It is light, very light. It's not a massive size, a mini dreadnought size. Is it a dreadnought size? It's probably not quite as big as a dreadnought. See if it says anything in there, it doesn't say a lot. Serial number slot 16, so I'm assuming it's a 2016 model. Um, it says made in China, but then it says inside Munich, Germany. Now Sigma guitars, were they once um, a subsidiary of Martin guitars many years ago? So basically cheaper Martins, but they're nothing to do with Martin anymore. They were bought up, they're completely independent now. So maybe they're trying to run off that reputation, which they are, and as long as they're making good guitars, why not? But they are not the same company as they were. But that said, this is, this is a very nice guitar. It will not be top-notch woods. You won't have the best rosewood fingerboard. You won't have the best woods in the construction. Uh, I don't know what woods these are. That could be a stained mahogany. Uh, back and sides there with a, could be a spruce top. Um, but don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on any of it because I have absolutely no idea. Now, Sigma Guitars they look established 1970. That's when they were part of Martin. But the newer Sigma is not the same company at all. Very nice looking thing though. Nice tuners on there as well. Uh, a beautiful thing. So I will set to work on it. Um, just check it. some of the things. We're high above the first fret. Everything looks to be pretty much okay there not seems to be some kind of uh, resin or plastic it doesn't seem to be bone. it could be bone it's highly glossed i don't think it is bone. i think it's a plastic it'd be nice to see a piece of bone on there but uh yeah strings strings don't look too old but we are going to put a new set of strings on there the only strings i stock i only stock one gauge of strings and i only stock one brand of strings and that is these gubbins here and they are dragon skin DR Dragon Skin Extra Light 1048, handmade in America, coated. These are my go-to strings. I've been using these for years when I discovered them. I prefer these over um, elixirs. Uh, these, the first set of these I put on my guitar, I had them on for 14 months. Never lost any tone, they were fantastic strings. So I really recommend these. Uh, DR Dragon Skin 
beautiful. The good thing about this pack, you get two in a pack for 14 quid at the time. Very, very difficult to get hold of. And you normally, pay, you could be paying 14 pounds for one set. But always look around for about two sets inside sticker on the top there. You'll get yourself two sets for about 16 quid. Very, very competitive pricing. But that is it, I'm going to crack on with the guitar. No need for me to film too much of it. Uh, I just want to get something down for the owner and something for my records. So I'm going to crack on with it and I'll come back and give you an update in a while. Last few minutes I've slightened off the truss rod and that has heightened the action of a 12 foot fret significantly. We're now at 3.25 millimeters high. So we're going to need to remove at least, well probably, I'm thinking of removing a millimeter off the action to get down to 2.25. It means removing two millimeters from under this saddle. That's quite a lot, but uh, it is the way we reduce the action. I don't really have any choice because the action is really so high now. The truss rod itself is very tight and it's a, it's a more or less buried truss rod. I'm not able to get at it using a conventional Allen key, Allen wrench like this one, even an extended one, because the truss rod starts about there, so I've had to use it that way, which makes it more difficult. Uh, it should be a two-way truss rod on there. I will have a closer look at that when I get the strings off. So I'm going to take the strings off after just taking a couple more measurements. So we're going to just check again at the 12th fret. The action is now 3.2 millimeters on the base side and 2.75 on the treble. I'd like to get a millimetre off each of those, so I am, like I say, I'm going to remove a millimetre and a half from here. Or just getting up towards two millimetres. No, I'll, I'll go for the two, four, two millimetres. If we go too low, we can always shim if we need to. I'd rather not have to do that, but it's just it's what we've got to do. I'm wondering if I've got another saddle knocking about in my past drawer anywhere. Let's have a quick gander. See if we've got anything in there because I do have. See, I do have a bone saddle blank there which I need carving. I do have a saddle here. I have a couple. I've one off a crafter, one off somewhere else. And what size is this? That is going to fit perfectly. I could maybe. I could always replace a saddle if I needed to. The crafter one's not going to be loud enough, is it? Oh, the crafter one's about perfect. So I, I do have some fallback if I need to alter anything. I could possibly fire one of these down. Crafter one, I don't know whether he, I've got no idea where the guitar is for that one, so I may as well put the crafter one in. I'll fire this one down and we'll have a look. So leave it with me, I'll get back to you. I've marked the saddle, uh, showing how much material I want to remove from underneath. I'll do that on a uh, Dremel shortly. But uh, we're going to move on to the frets, and I've got my neck dead straight by altering the truss rod. Uh, not straight edge on there, just to make sure the neck is straight, which it is. Tom to tom. And I've been across my fret rocker, and we have five high frets, being this one. One, two, three, four, five. Two areas, one there, one there, two there, and two there. So I'm just going to give you a check with the fret rocker. Quite high that one. So I'm just going to spot level these. Not too long, but they've got to be polished and uh, made scratch free again afterwards. So there's going to be an extra charge for doing these frets. I have emailed the client, well, I've messaged the client. I don't know how much more it's going to cost and uh, hopefully it's okay that one on red message yeah that's fine that's okay so it's giving me the go ahead to do threat work uh, I'll do a quick one while we're here it's going to be a three file affair I will have to buy rights tape up the fingerboard of the frets tape up the frets I'm working on and tape the fingerboard around that area so I'm just going to show you one while I'm here for argument's sake we're going to pick an easy one with just one spot so we're going to grab some tape we're going to choose this one because it's the easiest I'm going to mask off the area around the fret, we just need to work in this area, I will mark it with pen just so you can see, 
this area there to there. So it's area one, area two, area three. I always switch into three. Two in the middle, one, three. This one's going to be more or less all of the fret. This is more or less all of the fret. This one's more or less all of the fret. But all we're going to do is we're going to file that way. Rather than level the lot, which takes time and costs a lot more, we're just going to file that way. Before I do any of that, I'm going to gently support underneath the fret that needs to work. And I'm just going to gently tap it in with a nylon end and a fretting hammer. Just to make sure it is seated nicely. It is. And it's still high. So we're going to take flat file. Make sure I've got a cloth to make sure the, fret, fret, uh, the file is clean. And all I'm going to do is follow the radius using the flatter side of this file. It's a Swiss made file by Valor. I've had it years. It's a number four cut. It is so smooth, but it is very sharp. It's a fantastic file. I absolutely love it. What I'm going to do is follow the radius and just do a couple, five very light strokes here. Still high. And you know where to file when you're this experienced. And there you go. That is it. We're going to check one back, one forward, just make sure. It's not altered the relationship with these two or these two frets, which it hasn't. And there you go, that's perfectly level. Now, now because it's level, we've flattened the top, we need to rebuild that crown. So I'm going to go with my Stumac Z file. In, in, in short, next to you, closest to you, it's got a short cut on the far side. Of, sorry, closest to you has a long cut, closest to me, and a short cut. Flip it over, complete opposite, short cut, long cut. It's a diamond file. This will cut everywhere bar the top of the frets, and it will rebuild that crown. So it's just a matter of going over the area, you know, leveled. That's as much as you want to do. And that has roughly rebuilt that crown. And to smooth the crown off, just going to clean the file. To smooth it off, we'll go with a proper crowning file, which has already got the crown built in. Again, a diamond file, this is by Elmer. And I'm just going to come up the sides, and the sides here, just to smooth off those cut edges, and that's it. And we've rebuilt that crown on that fret. That is that one done. I've got four more to do. One, two. Obviously, we've all got much bigger areas to work with. So I've got to do it with a little bit more finesse, take my time a little bit more. If I go too low with any of these, I will be leveling a lot and I'll have to do that at my expense. So I'm going to really take my time with the rest of them. So once I've got that done, we're going to move on. We'll go and get that bridge or the saddle cut position and we'll get uh, we'll polish these frets up. We'll get some uh, mineral oil on this on this fingerboard. And uh, then we can crack on and get the guitar set up. I've turned the guitar around because the last fret I'm working on is right next to the body. And I'm working on, I wouldn't be working on the near side of the guitar been that way. And I wouldn't be able to get the file in the correct angle to work this end. So I turn it around and I can use the file because I'm only doing the fret from here to there. So I can use the file here and use it that way without a problem, but if I was on working on this side with the guitar flip round, I'd be holding the file like that and I'd probably be cutting into the body. You just can't do that. So, with the guitar turned round, and by the way, I'm going to mention something about the frets I've worked on. I've actually, this is a fifth one, supposedly, but before I've worked on, it's altered the relationship with the frets by the side of them. So, say for instance, I've worked on that one, I've had to work on these two as well and that one, just to alter some bits slightly. So, I've worked on most of these behind, so spot levelling. You never know, if you've got five to do, you don't normally do just five. If I do that one, I'm probably going to have to touch that one or that one afterwards, just a little bit. And that's been the case on two or three of them. So I've actually worked on, so far, I've probably worked on seven frets rather than the four. But anyway, let's just check everything again. I'm going to check the two around it. And we're going to, once I've done this one, we're going to go and check all of the frets to show that they're all level. So I know where I need to remove material. It's from this area to this area. Again, clean your file. 
steady yourself. It will find a level, you don't have to press down, just follow the radius and any high spots will automatically be removed. You'll find your level. And just keep coming back and checking. Like I say, if you do it wrong, you'll be leveling a lot. So we found the level on most of the throat. We've just got this area here now with the high spots. Get the bearings from just past centre to the last seven or eight mil. So I'm looking at this area as wide as my finger. small area there now and there you go we are level check the one one side and check the one the other side and that's all good, that's saying we're all level. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna just finish this one off, gonna recrown it. all of the frets leveled so what we're going to do now is we're going to check all of the frets and that could turn the guitar around and do it. it makes it a little bit easier but you know what i'm just going to do it as it is now we know these are level because they've not been touched and they were level anyway which is great And that is it, that's all of the frets level. We have done our job. I will be cleaning the files off camera. We'll get a wire brush on those to clean those properly, put them back in their packs. Uh, but while, or before I do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray some lemon oil on the fingerboard. That's a mineral oil. Just gonna cover these areas with anything we have to hand. Just so we don't get oil on the um, guitar itself. There you go. You know it's lemon oil, it's mineral oil, specially formulated from the darker woods. I need to refill this bottle. So you're going to soak into the wood, loosen any grime and dirt in there, which will wipe off in a bit. That's better. 
Right, I'll soak in, do it still 15, 20 minutes. I will, however, polish the frets using a fret guard or a fingerboard guard. Anything, if anything, it's going to, we're going to use it as a cleaner. <clears throat> Let me get the guitar back in a familiar position and I can show you fret polishing while I'm letting that um, oil do its thing. I'll leave the oil to soak in 15 20 minutes. While that's doing its thing, I'll be grabbing fret guard, fret water guard, I should say. Two, and I can polish the frets while the oil is still on the fingerboard there. And there we go. It's just a matter of grabbing some steel wool, extra fine steel wool, grade zero 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 zero. Here's something I used last night. I only used it on half the fingerboard. And this is great because I can polish the frets without disturbing the oil on the fingerboard. So it's going to take me a short while. I'm going to crack on, get this done. Let the oil do its stuff. Come back, wipe the oil off in 10 minutes. Then give it another wipe after 15 minutes. Make sure we've removed all the residue. And then I can move on to the saddle. Remove the uh, two millimeters from the base of the saddle. Once that's done, you can get some strings on and get this guitar set up. So there you go. Really quite simple. Nice and relaxing. Back soon. Right, you're not seeing me do this, so don't tell anyone if you hear what I'm saying. So, I'm going to cut the base of this saddle off using this Dremel tool in my vise. Uh, I will not be wearing gloves, I'll be doing it like that. I'm not going to film it, for obvious reasons. Uh, I would break about a thousand laws by doing so, but it's the way I always do it. I'm going to do it off camera. And all I'm going to do is, I'm not going to cut as such like this, because if I slip, I'm going to hurt myself. All I'm going to do is hold the saddle on the cutter and just let it wear it down to close to where I want to be then I'll finish off with a hand file and by sanding so pretend you've seen me do that and uh, I'll show you the finished result shortly surprise surprise the saddle is bone I could tell as soon as I started cutting it because it stinks so it definitely is a bone saddle and uh, I'm just now moving over to my sanding table it's not a sanding table it's my chest of drawers with all my bits and pieces in, great piece of kit, but I do have taped to the top various grits of uh, sandpaper, which I'm just going to use for sanding the bottom of this saddle, and there you go. And this makes the job a lot quicker, be even quicker if I had a sanding belt, but I don't have one. But all I'm going to do with this is level the base, like so. And all being well, I've not removed too much material. I thought I had, but I haven't. And just about the right amount. And that's it. There we go. A saddle is just about done. And it looks absolutely fine. Let's have a look at that. And that's a nice straight line. And I am very, very pleased with that. Let's get that in the guitar. I'm sure it goes in the right way. That seems to be the right way. And that is fine. We have enough clearance above the bridge. I will show you where we are. And there you go. We have enough clearance on there. Probably a little bit lower than I would have liked. But I'm sure once I get the strings on, the action is going to be absolutely spot on. So that's all done, ready for strings. Um, all I need to do now is one I'm going to zoom out. And like I said, remember I told you I was going to leave that oil on there 10 15 minutes. Well, the 10 15 minutes are up. So, what we're going to do is we're going to wipe it all off. So, this is all filling nicely with timing. Oh, this workshop stinks of cut bone. Doesn't smell very nice. I was surprised when I was cutting into it.
and that's not so bad at all, that's not that dirty. That's all we've got off there. That is not bad at all really. So the guitar is all ready for new strings. So I'm going to get some new strings on there and I'll come back, we'll get it set up and we'll see if everything's right. I think this, with the strings on now and everything holds attention, the, everything should be pretty much spot on. I may have to just tweak the truss one a little bit. I'm thinking everything else is going to be absolutely bang on, so fabulous. I've lost my, uh, I do it all the time, the video controller. I'll walk up to it, there you go. There we are, for our friends, all done. And uh, the major problems with this guitar was one, the action was way too high and we had some unlevel frets. I've leveled the frets, I've considerably reduced the height at the bridge or saddle. I took two mil off the bottom of there. We now have a lovely action at the 12 fret of, we're just under, we're about 2.2 millimeters on the bass side and about 1.7 on the treble. And that's it, the guitar plays really nicely. Uh, Sounds beautiful, and just look at it. Look at that. Strings I've put on are my favourites. DR Dragon Skin. Uh, what thing are they? Are they extra lights? To whatever. They are definitely light gauge. Coated strings from America. If you shop around, you get two sets of these, 16 quid. I've charged them eight quid for the set. Um, and the work is I've done with the fret lever and everything has cost him 70 pounds. So all in all, just under 80 quid. Not expensive, worth doing on a guitar like this. The guitar now plays superbly, um, sounds superb and looks superb. What more do you want? So that is it on this one. Not nice to get an easy one in for a change, but it's all ready to go back to its owner. So uh, just before I do, a reminder of my websites. Uh, you've got fretfriend.co.uk, even better than that, Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash NG17. That's facebook.com forward slash NG O-N-E. S-E-V-E-N, I am Victor, I am your fret friend. Until next time, as always, God bless you, be good to each other, and I'll see you in the next one.